Well, right now, here the mayor of Madison respond directly to critics of the city's approach to keeping the roads safe. Lost live drive. We're watching the roads this morning for your morning commute after some overnight freezing drizzle. And we are watching some of that uh, freezing drizzle move into uh, southern Wisconsin. Some of this will be changing over to snow later this morning. We'll track it for you coming up. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. On a Tuesday, I'm Chris Stanford. And I'm Leah Linshine. Thanks for waking up with us. Visibility reduced. We're watching the potential for freezing rain. Could get a little dicey out there in your morning commute. Yeah, so all this precipitation is moving in right now. Let's get to Kelly Slifka with where it's at and what exactly is falling from the sky. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, we've had mainly just some freezing uh, fog here in Madison. The uh, windshield, you'll probably have to scrape that. This is collecting on any exposed surface like your vehicle. Maybe some elevated surfaces, your patio, make sure you're cautious as you step out the door. Even some of the sidewalks that haven't been treated. Main roads look to be just mainly wet because of that fog this morning. Uh, but some of this light precipitation, a lot of this is actually kind of fizzling out here. You can see that over the last hour or so, but maybe seeing actually something falling from the sky other than suspended fog particles. But uh, over there down to the south in uh, Fitchburg, uh, down toward uh, McFarland, Fort Atkinson, seeing some of this as everything is lifting to the north. Uh, right along I-39 here, getting closer to Highway 12 on the uh, south side, uh, headed over there into parts of Jefferson County. So you see this pink shading. This would indicate some of that freezing rain, a light freezing rain, some freezing drizzle. Eventually, that will be changing over to snow between 8 and 9 o'clock. Visibility has actually improved a little bit here in Madison at two miles, two and a quarter or two and a half in the uh, Dells, down to a quarter of a mile right now in Monroe. So that fog is freezing on contact. We're sitting at 31 in Madison, Monona, been there for a few hours now. 32 in Middleton, also Mount Ver Vernon over toward Oregon. Edgerton now up uh, to 33 this morning, so it is actually climbing above freezing. That would be some good news if we can get that temperature above freezing. All of a sudden, Wisconsin with this first warm alert day after the uh, glaze of ice this morning. We will change over to snow here during the later part of the rush hour. One to three inches expected, generally about one to two. It's going to be that really heavy wet snow as it moves on in. But you can see this uh, tracking uh, to the north, and that's what we can expect going into the afternoon hours. As mentioned, some of this uh, moving through Stoughton over toward Deerfield. Uh, taking a look at the future track again, as you can see some of that pink moving through. So driving this morning, I think the main roads will be just wet this morning. But uh, low visibility, keep uh, plenty of distance between you and the guy in front of you. Snow develops through, though, later in the, during the rush hour, and that's why we do have this first warrant alert day uh, for that glaze. Winter weather advisory is in effect until 2 o'clock for most of our area because of the ice this morning, then the snow. Thick fog this morning. Allow some extra time headed off to work or school. Not only this system, we got more headed away later this week. We'll talk about those coming up. Thanks, Kelly. We have 25 school delays this morning on channel3000.com. You can find the full list. Uh, those delays include uh, Albany, Barneveld, Benton, Cassville, Cuba City, Darlington, Mineral Point, Fort Atkinson, uh, about 25 of them. So we had a nice list going on channel3000.com. We're keeping an eye on that. Josh Breiter's keeping an eye on the roads on Live Drive. How they looking, Josh? Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, we're on East Washington Avenue heading east right now. We're at the stoplight at Fair Oaks Avenue, and I can tell you the roads are actually in pretty good shape this morning. Like Kelly was mentioning, the temperature definitely working in our favor. All the crews have been able to get out, definitely put some of that uh, salt and sand down. So we're seeing primarily good road conditions so far, especially on the main thoroughfares throughout the city of Madison. Um, we've been anywhere from the Beltline to John Nolan Drive, the downtown area, now East Washington Avenue heading towards the inner state. So as you're heading out and about this morning, you should be good to go. But do keep in mind, like Kelly mentioned too, uh, actually the most treacherous part was just getting to our vehicles. The sidewalks that had not been treated yet, those were a little slick. But right now, main roads are just fine um, as we are out and about on the live drive this morning. And we'll let you know if anything changes right here on News 3 Now this morning. Josh Breider, thank you very much. Let's take a live look across southern Wisconsin this morning. A lot of pink. That means slippery stretches. That red means ice covered. We're continuing to see that expand. Now let's start in Madison. There is an incident along the Beltline at Gammon Road. Those eastbound lanes might see some backups here. The right shoulder is blocked due to a disabled vehicle. It happened about half an hour ago, still causing some problems on the Beltline. So keep an eye on that if you are headed eastbound on the Beltline again near that Gammon Road exit. We're seeing a lot of those school closings in southwest Wisconsin. We're starting to see a little bit more ice-covered roads in that neck of the woods around Platteville as well. 
Again, those school closings, they are uh, streaming at the bottom of your screen there. We also have them up on channel3000.com. Yeah, all those delays in districts to the south where that system is just moving in this morning. Some of Madison's roads were just starting to clear up, too. Drivers continue to criticize the city's response to the last storm, and a former mayor has been leading the charge. Paul Soglin directly blames Mayor Santiago Rhodes Conway for the conditions. With more than 20 combined years of experience as mayor, he says last Friday the mayor waited too long to send the plows out, and by the time traffic had packed the snow down, it was too late. This is clearly not unprecedented. I can't tell you how many times, and I had to deal with 12-inch storms on top of previous snow and followed by sub-zero weather. That is Wisconsin. Of course, Mayor Rhodes Conway disagrees. She says many of Soglin's criticisms, which he made public on Facebook, are not accurate. I feel like this, uh, it's important that this is not a political decision, right? That this is really something that is driven by data and by experts. Um, and so I really rely on city staff who I think, again, are really good at their jobs and um, to advise me and my folks, and I'm not going to uh, overrule them. Madison Streets Division spokesperson Brian Johnson, Johnson uh, stands by the department's decision on when to plow. He says last time the area saw this kind of heavy snow followed by sub-zero temperatures was 45 winters ago. Roads may continue to be dicey today because of that freezing rain and fog. To stay up to date on today's forecast and road conditions, be sure to download our free First Warn weather and traffic app. Now to an update on the suspicious death in Juneau County last week. The Sheriff's Office is officially calling the incident a homicide. Shane Hogan is here with what we know this morning. Good morning, Shane. Hey guys, good morning. That's right. The Juneau County Sheriff's Office is now releasing more information on this homicide including the victim's name. Officials have identified him as 57-year-old Floyd A. Burdick of Grand Marsh. We're also learning this morning two suspects are under arrest in connection with this homicide. Officials have not yet released the names of those in custody. Burdick was found last Thursday morning on County Highway M at the Oak Ridge Trail parking area that's northeast of Camp Douglas and just south of the town of Cutler. At the time of the discovery, authorities described his death as suspicious and now upgraded to a homicide. Again, this case remains under investigation. We will provide any updates if those two in custody are officially charged and named. Shane Hogan, thanks for the update. 607 outgoing Dane County Executive Joe Parisi has an endorsement this morning for State Senator Melissa Agard. Announcing his endorsement, Parisi said Agard's experience makes her the right candidate to take over his job. Take a listen. And as the former Democratic leader in the Wisconsin State Senate, she gets what it takes to work with diverse constituencies, to build broad coalitions, and to navigate challenging political environments. So far, only two other people have filed campaign finance registration statements for county executive. That's Madison Alder, Regina Vitaver, and former Democratic governor candidate Bob Harlow. New this morning, nonstop service to Los Angeles is returning to the Dane County Airport this summer. A new carrier to the airport, Breeze Airways, will facilitate the service. It all starts May 22nd with departures twice a week. The service is available to anyone, whether you're traveling for fun or work. It's the first time the airport's offered non-top service to LAX since the COVID-19 pandemic began. In a statement announcing the return of the service, Executive Joe Parisi said in part, the new route not only enhances domestic and international activity, but also opens up endless possibilities for business, tourism, and cultural exchanges between our communities. UW-Madison is facing a civil rights complaint over programs made for students of color. A conservative group called the Equal Protection Project claims UW's BIPOC Fellows Program amounts to discrimination. UW's website describes this program as committed to connecting black, indigenous, and other undergraduate students of color. To be eligible for membership in the program, a student has to be a member of a historically underrepresented racial or ethnic group. Unless you are a quote unquote student of color, you cannot participate in it. That sort of racial segregation, that sort of racial discrimination is unlawful. And we're asking the Department of Education to so find and to impose the appropriate remedies on the university. The founder of the Equal Protection Project says this program's awarding of scholarships based on race 
uh, violates the 14th Amendment and the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Both of those acts responded to racism specifically against black Americans. UW Whitewater's Chancellor, meantime, is condemning an anti-Semitic demonstration on campus. Sunday night, police received reports of four masked people outside of a residence hall. Video shows the group yelling anti-Semitic slurs and displaying swastikas. All of this the night before students had their first day of the spring semester. Right now, the university is asking anyone with information about the incident to call UW Whitewater police. Chancellor Corey King condemned the racist demonstration in a statement that reads in part, the actions of the group last night are abhorrent and go against our core values. At UW Whitewater, we strive to create a safe community where everyone feels a sense of belonging. We reject hate in all its forms. More UW news now. Another two-year campus is shutting down its in-person learning. Next fall, UW-Green Bay's branch in Marinette will end all on-campus instruction. Online courses will still continue there. This year, only 99 undergrads were enrolled at the campus. Last year, branch campuses in Washington County, Fond du Lac, and Richland Center all ended in-person learning. This is 10 of the university's four-year campuses are all staring down the barrel of a combined $18 million deficit by summer. We're asking for your help this morning. All week long, we are putting on a community baby shower. News 3 Now is teaming up with Babies and Beyond to get the essentials to new parents in need. You can drop off donations at Babies and Beyond on the east side along Stoughton Road from 9 to 6 all week long. You can also drop them off here at the station or on Raymond Road. All the details are up at channel3000.com. And certain items are really needed right now. We're looking for donations of certain sizes of diapers, uh, the larger sizes of diapers, if I'm not mistaken, wipes and baby formula. Pull-ups are also needed. You can donate monetarily or uh, write a check to the organization or check out their Amazon wish list. You can find a link at channel3000.com. A really worthy cause here. Lots of new parents who could use a little leg up. Yeah, when you showed the shelves yesterday and how many diapers they needed to uh, just cover a week's worth of need, uh, it, that stuff goes really quick, so the more we can get in, uh, the better it's going to be for families. A thousand babies served a month. We're going to continue wow. to bring you updates on that community baby shower this week. 611 now. Let's take a live look out at the roads. This is at the Beltline at Gammon Road. An incident here. There was a car that was disabled on the exit. These are eastbound lanes that might be a little bit impacted. Roads are looking fairly clear outside of this incident in Madison, but still you're going to want to take it slow. Kelly is tracking some freezing fog and the potential for rain as well. Yeah, you can definitely see from that camera the uh, fog this morning that has been fairly thick and with temperatures below freezing. It is freezing on contact on your car and your windshield. We do have some light freezing precipitation moving in already in southern Wisconsin. We'll track, track it for you and see how much snow we can expect later today coming up. All right, and coming up in morning sports where the new AP poll ranks Badger men's basketball out of a big game in Minnesota. Watching News 3 Now This Morning, brought to you by Toyota. Dear Winter, we're coming. Our squad of vehicles with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is ready to take you on. Safety's the name of our game. Bundle up. Toyota. Right now, you can get 2.99% APR financing for 60 months on a tough 2023 Toyota Tacoma. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. My dry eyes made me a burning, stinging five times a day. Makeup smearing. Drops user. I want another option. That's not another drop. Tirvaya. It's not another drop. It's the first and only nasal spray for dry eye. Tirvaya treats the signs and symptoms of dry eye disease fast by helping your body produce its own real tears. Common side effects include sneezing, cough, and throat and nose irritation. Relying only on drops? Not me. My own real tears are my relief. Ask your eye doctor about Tirvaya. Spectrum Mobile brings you our best deal to start the new year. Now you can get unlimited mobile for $15 per line. That's right, only $15 a month per line. It's our best price on unlimited mobile. Switch now and save over $1,400 for the first year with Spectrum Mobile, the nation's fastest growing mobile provider. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for just $15 per line with no added taxes or hidden fees and no contracts. Call 855-204-1678 or visit a Spectrum store near you. 
With Spectrum Mobile, you get a fast, reliable 5G network that millions of customers rely on. And you get the fastest wireless speeds with unlimited data to stream all day and the freedom to text and talk all you want. Plus nationwide 5G at no additional cost. All this for $15 a line with no added taxes or hidden fees. Start saving over $1,400 on your mobile bill now. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for just $15 per line with no added taxes or hidden fees and no contracts. Call 855-204-1678 or visit a Spectrum store near you. I'm Megan Tim, Director of Community Health at SSM Health. You may know us as healthcare providers, but we live here too. And as good neighbors, we know our community thrives when we take care of each other. That's why SSM Health and News 3 Now are sharing the keys to health. Watch for our expert information and advice on air, online, and at fun local events. Join SSM Health and News 3 Now, and together, we'll unlock a healthier community by taking time for kids. Get ready, Madison. Madison Magazine's Winter Restaurant Week is here. Over 40 restaurants will showcase three-course meals from $30 with 15 restaurants serving lunch. Plus, enjoy the perfect pairings with wine and more from E&J Gallo. Check our online guide on madisonmagazine.com to see which places offer takeout and dine-in. Save the dates January 22nd through the 26th. Madison Magazine's Winter Restaurant Week, where good times and great meals come together. Presenting sponsor, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund, and supporting sponsor, Roth Cheese. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Six fifteen on your Tuesday morning. Josh Breider here on the live drive. This is the interstate southbound approaching the Beltline. We're keeping an eye on your morning commute after some overnight freezing drizzle. We are moving at the posted speeds with temperatures hovering around freezing this morning. That salt definitely working on the roadways. So you should be okay as you're heading out here within the next hour. We will let you know if that changes as that system begins to move in. I'm Josh Breider on the live drive. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks, Josh. We do have a few more school delays this morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. You know, we did have the uh, freezing fog this morning, and uh, that's uh, definitely uh, froze on the um, cars, any kind of elevated surface, exposed surface as well. So you're going to have to scrape the windshield and allow some extra time. The visibilities have been down as well. Right now, as we uh, take a look at our Doppler track, we are seeing some of this uh, precipitation that uh, continues to uh, move across the area. If we get to our maps here, uh, some of the light precipitation, we have some uh, light freezing drizzle, some light freezing rain uh, moving through the area. And uh, that continues uh, to move in from the south. The broad area of rain is in Illinois, but it's clashing with that colder air that we have here in southern Wisconsin. So basically, it's a little bit milder aloft, above freezing, if you will. But as you get toward the surface, that's below freezing. That's why we're getting some of that freezing uh, precipitation that's been moving into uh, southern parts of Dane County. It's actually starting to change over rain in Monroe and Janesville as temperatures have climbed above freezing. But right now, that really light precipitation moving in southern Dane County is basically south of 151. But as you head over toward Fitchburg, over toward Stoughton, then especially as you get toward uh, Fort Atkinson at Jefferson, that's where you're seeing a, maybe a little bit more intense, if you will, uh, falling uh, at a little bit better clip over there that may be causing some uh, problems especially on some of those elevated surfaces if you walk out your patio you might encounter uh, some, some a little bit of a slickness so just be a little bit cautious walking out and even on the sidewalks this morning because some of that ice uh, on some of the, that may form on some of those uh, sidewalks that have not been treated all right after the uh, glaze of ice this morning we're talking about one to three inches of snow that'll be accumulating it'll be that very heavy wet sloppy snow this should be ending though later this afternoon so i'll do the storm that's coming in from the south and that's what's going to bring us our snow chances I'd say between 8 and 9 o'clock, we'll start to see this gradually shift over to mainly snow into the early afternoon hours, but should be out of here after about 4 o'clock. Uh, so the bottom line, we are looking at that light freezing rain this morning, then changing to snow, 1 to 3 inches total when all is said and done coming in this afternoon. We'll be mild with rain showers tomorrow and also Thursday. Finally, some dry, quieter weather by the end of the week into the weekend, but it seems like we've just been inundated with these storms after storm, and that's what's going to continue this week. As far as ice, minor accumulation, maybe a couple of one-hundredths of an inch of ice. Of course, when you get a little bit of a glaze, uh, it can obviously stick on any exposed surface that's been below freezing. So look, watch on our future track as we go through the morning hours. This uh, light freezing precipitation turns to that blue. That would be indicating snow. So it gradually changed over to all snow later this morning into the early afternoon hours and noticing temperatures actually climb. So a lot of this will be melting on contact after four o'clock. Most of this should be out of here 
as temperatures remain above freezing. About one to two inches for most locations, maybe an isolated spot picking up a little bit more than two inches going into uh, later this morning. There goes my door shutting out as the wind just picked up. All right, we got another system coming away tomorrow morning, but it's going to be warm enough. It's going to be mainly some rain showers moving on in uh, that should be out mainly during the morning hours. Right now, 31 in Madison. It's above freezing, though, in Janesville, so anything falling from the sky is uh, liquid form. Across Dane County, 31 in Wanakee, 31 in Sun Prairie, now getting up to 32 in Stoughton and Belleville. So we have a little bit of a glaze of ice this morning, the first warm alert day, then the light snow uh, this morning into the afternoon. Another chance for some rain tomorrow, another one on Thursday. Finally, quieter weather by Friday the weekend. Wisconsin men's basketball fell to number 13 in the AP poll this week. John Blackwell, the Big Ten's freshman of the week, and the Big Ten best Badgers have a big one tonight in Minnesota for the border battle. Minnesota has stumbled after a hot start, losing three straight. Meanwhile, the Badgers, they've won 12 of their last 14 thanks to an electric offense. Greg Gard calls the offensive explosion a blessing and a curse because he doesn't want to forget about defense. Not that we don't emphasize the defensive end because we do, um, but I think when you're rolling offensively, you kind of step off the gas or take your foot off the gas a little bit. If they want to go where they say they want to go and what we've talked about um, and accomplish, you know, we have to become more complete specifically on that end. The Bucs have struggled on defense, trying to get another one from the Pistons, and it was another tight game. Watch this sequence. Bucks up six with three minutes to go. Giannis stuffed on the bunny. The Bucs turn it over, but the freak never gives up on the play. Dives to the ground to take it back, and the ball finds Brooke Lopez under the basket for the score. What a sequence there. Bucks will their way to another win. 122-113 to 113 is your final. After a magical season, it's time for Green Bay to pack their bags. It was locker room clean-out day at Lambeau, and the team was understandably somber after coming so close to the NFC Championship game. But for a team that had no expectations at the start of the year, the focus heading into the offseason is to keep that underdog mentality and take nothing for granted. Definitely disappointed how it ended, especially I thought for the majority of the game, I thought we outplayed them. And also reiterated to them that just because we got to a certain spot doesn't mean that's guaranteed moving forward. You know, nobody really gave us a chance this year. Everybody going to be patting us on our back and telling us how good we are. I understand we, we, we was the seventh seed uh, this year. And, you know, um, that, that speaks for itself. That's your morning sports fix. Have a terrific Tuesday. Andrew, thank you very much. 622 still ahead of fire trucks spinning out of control. You have to see this video out of Missouri. We'll have it when we come back. The first warm weather team takes you beyond the barometer. Only on News 3 Now. So I'm not sure I could even talk about this, but U.S. Cellular has a new deal where you can get any phone for free. Seriously. Wow. My business sense says that's a great deal. You're so right. That's a totally awesome deal. Get any phone free when you switch. Cobison Buses, now hiring. I'm Dina Noland. I drive for Cobison Buses. Working with Cobison, it's definitely been great because of the flexibility. First day of school for my son. The fact that I get to bring him there and I can just park my bus right on the side and walk in. They don't, they don't mind that. They want you to be there for your family. I've always enjoyed working with kids. The opportunity to transport them in a bus, I enjoy doing it. Visit Cobison.com to apply. Earn now, spend later during Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Rewards Members Dollar Days. Now through the end of January, Rewards Members earn $10 in Blaine's Bucks for every $100 spent in store to redeem later just like cash. Start earning now on new resealable deluxe mixed nuts or whole cashews, $17.99. Rewards Members save an extra two bucks. And 20 pound bags of Blaine's brand Easy Scoop Cow Litter, two for 14 bucks. Earn Blaine's Bucks now to spend later during Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Rewards Members Dollar Days. I was stuck. Unresolved depression symptoms were in my way. I needed more from my antidepressant. Vralar helped give it a lift. Adding Vralar to an antidepressant is clinically proven to help relieve overall depression symptoms better than an antidepressant alone. And in Vralar clinical studies, most saw no substantial impact on weight. 
Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke, report unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, as these may be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, and high cholesterol may occur. Movement dysfunction and restlessness are common side effects. Stomach and sleep issues, dizziness, increased appetite, and fatigue are also common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. I didn't have to change my treatment. I just gave it a lift. Ask about Raylar and learn how AbbVie can help you save. We believe every baby deserves a healthy start. Yet many parents in our community are struggling to afford the basic necessities. You can help change that. Please donate to the News 3 Now Community Baby Shower. Drop off infant care items at Babies and Beyond, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Visit channel3000.com for complete details. News 3 Now Community Baby Shower, sponsored by Viridian Homes and Dave Jones. So I'm not sure I could even talk about this, but U.S. Cellular has a new deal where you can get any phone for free. Seriously. Wow. My business sense says that's a great deal. You're so right. That's a totally awesome deal. Get any phone free when you switch. Shane's here to tell us what's trending today. All right, guys, we're staying on theme. We've been talking a lot about road conditions in our area the last few weeks, yeah. of course. But check this out from eastern Missouri. A fire truck completely spinning out of control Whoa. as it slid down an ice-covered residential street in Imperial, Missouri. Look at this thing. I mean, it does a full 360, maybe 720. I mean, how no one was hurt in this, thankfully. How that thing didn't hit a tree or a house or a car. Isn't this right out of your nightmares where Oof. you're like, I can't control the vehicle, I right. can't stop. Terrifying. Looks like it's right out of a movie, thankfully. Uh, no one was seriously hurt. That's incredible. Uh, Kelly, what's happening outside for us? Yeah, if anything like that around here, we do have some light freezing drizzle this morning. This will be changing to some snow and it's very foggy this morning. Temperatures will climb above freezing later this morning. Thanks, Kelly. We're back after this. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Can you achieve a brighter, wider, more confident smile in just five minutes? Yes, you can. With Power Swab's Teeth Whitening. Let's meet our participants. They all have one thing in common. They want whiter teeth without the hassle and sensitivity caused by other whitening methods. Watch as they take the Power Swab's 5-Minute Challenge, transforming their smiles with just a few simple swipes. In just 5 minutes, they've uncovered a brighter, more confident smile, and so can you. With Power Swab's, you don't have to wait weeks or months to see results. It's fast, effective, and perfect for people on the go. Power Swab's deliver dramatic results in just 5 minutes a day. Step 1. Scrub your teeth with the Stain Out Swab to hydrate your enamel and lift stains from not only natural teeth, but also caps, crowns, and veneers. Step two, use the Ultra White Swab to gently whiten teeth by two shades after the very first use and six shades in seven days with zero to minimal sensitivity. But don't just take our word for it. Listen to what real people had to say about their experience with Power Swabs. My favorite thing about the Power Swabs is that I was actually able to take the swab and really get through some of those areas that are kind of like untreated. I felt like I, I can immediately see the results and I'm like, oh, I'm definitely starting to see the shades getting brighter and brighter or whiter and whiter. Power Swabs actually, I felt, really worked for me. I definitely had a couple of people telling me that there was a difference. My wife, for sure, was letting me know that the coffee stains were slowly coming out of my teeth. It made me happy, you know? It made me want to take pictures showing my teeth. One friend was like, did you, your teeth look like really white. Did you, did you do anything to it? And I was like, I did. <laughs> I did Power Swabs. Are you ready to take the Power Swabs five minute challenge? Order now and start enjoying a brighter, whiter smile in minutes. Call, go online, or scan the code on your screen right now for a special offer to receive 50% off. Now get ready to look years younger with Power Swabs. Nice shirt. Oh, thanks. And those kicks. Yeah, I got all this at the Salvation Army. Wait, there's one here in town? Yeah, I'll take you. I'm in. You're gonna love it. All right. That's it? Brand new? 
Now's your chance to save big on brand new clothes, the latest housewares, and brand new shoes. Running shoes. Air fryers, too? The grand opening of the Salvation Army in Madison, February 2nd from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Spectrum Mobile brings you our best deal to start the new year. Now you can get unlimited mobile for $15 per line. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for just $15 per line with no added taxes or hidden fees and no contracts. Save over $1,400 for the first year. Call 855-231-7007. Spectrum Mobile includes nationwide 5G and the fastest wireless speeds with unlimited talk, text, and data. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for just $15 per line. Call 855-231-7007 or visit a Spectrum store near you. This morning, reactions to the beginning of the vice president's reproduction rights tour. And the first presidential primary already underway. We have the latest from the tense Republican race. And let's give you your first look outside this morning. If you can see anything out your window, we're watching for that freezing fog that's got our capital completely covered, Kelly. Yeah, it might have your windshield uh, covered in some ice this morning, so scraping that off. We are also tracking some uh, light rain, freezing rain moving into southern Wisconsin. We'll track it for you coming up. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Leah lynch -Eyed. I'm Chris Stanford. Yeah, that icy, it's it's slick out there. They were, things were just starting to clear up, too. Things were just starting to look better. Yeah, this is Wisconsin, that's for sure. About 30 schools are calling in a two-hour delay, yeah. mostly in the southwest corner of the state where yeah. we're seeing that uh, storm system start to move in. The concern now for potential freezing rain. Right, so let's get to Kelly Sliff guy. He's going to lay it all out for us. What are we in for today, Kelly? Well, I tell you what, we can't just get that in between. You know, we jumped from uh, sub-zero temperatures. Now we're in the uh, 30s, and we're just hanging at uh, right near freezing. And some of this precipitation coming in from the south, riding up and over that colder air, producing some of the fog and some light freezing drizzle and freezing rain this morning. Just a glaze of ice. I think the main roads are going to be okay. It's mainly the... Uh, sidewalks and also any kind of elevated surface. Your car is going to get uh, fairly ice covered because some of the freezing fog we've had and also some of this drizzle moving in. This will eventually change over to snow. I think by the mid-morning hour, say between 8 and 9 o'clock, that should be ending. That snow will be ending uh, as we get in the mid-afternoon hours toward 4 o'clock or so. Right now, uh, visibility is down to a mile and three quarters in Madison. Two and a half in uh, Wisconsin. Dell's actually improved a little bit, but still down to a half mile right now in Monroe. 31, we've been hanging at 31 for the last three hours or so here in Madison. It's up to 32 in Oregon. Edgerton now up to 34, so that is some good news. These temperatures, we want to get them above freezing, so get rid of that ice potential. Either way, this system coming in from the south, clashing with that cold air we have in place right now, so some of this light precipitation, uh, some freezing drizzle, some light freezing rain. See it starting to move across southern parts of Dane County. Extends from Fort Atkinson across Stoughton, McFarland. Fitchburg now seeing this over toward Verona, seeing some of this light precipitation moving on in. As we track this out for you, you see this uh, pink shading, but notice as we get closer to 9 o'clock, the pink, which would be freezing rain, changes over to snow. That means that upper levels are starting to cool off, so anything falling from up above will eventually change over to snow. But some icy uh, wind chills this morning. Also watch out for some of those sidewalks that have not been treated with salt, maybe a little bit slick. Watch out as you're stepping out the door this morning. We also have the low visibility creating uh, some uh, problems. Keep plenty of distance between you and the person in front of you. As that snow develops during the rush hour, uh, we are looking at uh, one to three inches of snow, it looks like. That's why we have the winter weather advisors in effect until two o'clock for most of our area. So a lot of fog this morning, a little bit of freezing drizzle yet. 31 right now reported at the airport. That will be changing to some snow sometime between 8 and 9 o'clock as temperatures do continue to warm above freezing later on this morning. We'll track another system coming away later tonight. Coming up. Okay, Kelly, thank you very much. Let's get out to Josh now. He's on live drive. How's it looking, Josh? Hey, good morning, guys. We're on the Beltline eastbound approaching Verona Road right now. We're moving at the posted speed. So far, so good. Kelly was talking about those temperatures really working in our favor so far this morning around freezing. All the crews overnight able to get out pre-treat, do some of the salting they haven't been able to due to all the cold weather in recent days. But this morning, so far, so good. Again, as we're getting ready for the morning commute, all the main roads looking just fine. Uh, neighborhoods uh, for those that have been tackled are looking a little bit better. You might have a couple of uh, icy spots maybe on the sidewalk just walking to your vehicle this morning if it hasn't been salted. But your roads and your morning commute looking fine at this hour. We'll let you know if anything changes, guys. Back to you. All right, Josh, thank you. You can uh, keep up to date with the latest 
changing weather conditions through our Channel 3000 First Warn weather app. If you don't have it, what are you doing? Go download it right now in your app store. Okay, it's 634. Happening today, voters in New Hampshire will head to the polls for the nation's first primary of the 2024 election season. Shane Hogan's here to break down what we're in for today. Hey there, Shane. Hey guys, good morning. That's right. Things really starting to pick up in the election season. The New Hampshire primary now just a two-person race between former President Donald Trump and former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley. Last night, both candidates delivering their final push to voters, taking aim at one another. And New Hampshire's Secretary of State is projecting a record turnout today with those crucial 22 GOP delegates up for grabs. In the latest polling, though, Trump has widened his lead to double digits over Haley, but still voters unsure on who they want. Nikki Haley's biggest weakness is that we don't know what she's going to do, whereas I know what Trump is going to do. It'd be refreshing to have a young woman who's intelligent in the Oval Office and also not to have Trump come back. You can see a lot of voters still split on who will take those important delegates. Now, while congressional Democrats descend on the Granite State to support a write-in campaign for President Biden, New Hampshire officials say they're now investigating reports of a fake robocall impersonating his voice. The false call urges Democrats to stay home today as opposed to going out and writing in the president's name. It is unclear how many people have received that robocall. A reminder here too, New Hampshire is not a winner take all state. So any candidate who receives over 10% of a statewide primary vote will be awarded delegates. That means, you know, it is expected Nikki Haley is going to lose. Donald Trump should carry that state with the polling right now, but uh, Haley should walk away with some delegates. Yeah, I think the bigger question today is how close can she get? Exactly. Are the polls right or is she really in there uh, to challenge the former and president? And if she does, you know, shorten that gap a little bit, what does that mean moving forward in right. the next primaries as well? There you go. Shane Hogan, good stuff. Yep. 635, a big week in Wisconsin for national politics as well. President Biden will be in Wisconsin this Thursday. According to a White House statement, the Biden campaign is set to stump in Superior, highlighting his economic agenda. He'll talk about rebuilding infrastructure, lowering costs, spurring a small business boom, and creating good-paying jobs. The president was just here. Last month, he visited the Wisconsin Black Chamber of Commerce in Milwaukee. Vice President Kamala Harris is back in Washington this morning after a trip to Wisconsin. The VP kicked off the Reproductive Freedoms Tour in Big Bend on the 51st anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision. Harris blames former President Donald Trump, claiming the Supreme Court justices he nominated were chosen to overturn Roe. She blasted Trump for saying that he was, quote, proud of it. Proud that women across our nation are suffering? Proud that women have been robbed of a fundamental freedom? Proud that doctors could be thrown in prison for caring for their patients? That young women today have fewer rights than their mothers and grandmothers? How dare he? Politicians on both sides of the aisle are focused on Wisconsin this year. The state's once again a prime battleground state headed into the 2024 election. We're hearing from the chair of Wisconsin's Republican Party in response to Harris's visit. He says she should be at the U.S.-Mexico border instead of here. Brian Schimming also pointed to the economy and inflation as bigger issues the administration should be focused on. You know, for the vice president to jet into Wisconsin now with this trail of problems this administration is facing from a policy perspective and from a political perspective is disgraceful. Chairman Schimming also ripped into state Democrats' attempts to halt a Republican-led abortion bill. That would create a referendum, asking Wisconsin voters to decide on the issue. The United States Supreme Court sent the issue back to the state, uh, you know, for the states uh, to have a judgment. Why wouldn't we go to the people on this? I think that's the question for the Democrats. What are they afraid of? Why are they afraid to put this question in front of the voters or the people of this state? Such a referendum would take effect the next day if it passes. The governor has vowed to veto any bill that restricts abortion rights. The idea that voters should be the ones who choose to ban abortion in Wisconsin may soon be put to the test. The public doesn't seem too happy about the proposed 14-week -week abortion ban that's on the table. Yesterday, the bill was open for public comment. It received a lot of criticism from both pro-life and pro-choice supporters. 
The pro-life side saying that the bill's a waste of time and politicians should spend their time working on reinstating a total abortion ban. Pro-choice advocates, meantime, argue that the bill would discourage people from attempting to go into the medical field because of the legal gray area surrounding abortions, among other arguments. Democrats took an especially hard stance against the bill, saying that determining if and when to have an abortion is a personal decision that should be made by patients and their doctors, not by politicians. Wisconsinites need the freedom to make their own reproductive health care decisions. 639, looking around your child's school or maybe even your own work office, it seems like everybody in the area is sick recently. Our Armand Rahman sat down with a doctor to figure out what's going around. <coughs> Compared to last year, not quite as high or different in some way, but it is high. At UW Health, Dr. Dan Shirley says they're still seeing a lot of patients with constant long-lasting cough and other respiratory symptoms. And we do expect them to go down. Whether that peaks again before the next fall and winter, we're not sure. This has been a trend since more people have been getting together without masks inside during the cold winter months after COVID. And people get the sense, you know, this is out of my control. I'm going to get everything my kid has. Um, and everybody that is sick at work is going to spread it around. Uh, we know from COVID that we can make an impact on some of these things. So say you start feeling a little crummy, but if it could be so many different illnesses, how serious should you treat it? Number one is to make sure you don't have COVID. Um, and, you know, the start of that is to stay home when you have symptoms that seem like COVID or other, some other respiratory virus. Um, because these other ones are also contagious, just like COVID. After making sure you're negative for COVID, Dr. Shirley says to check with your doctor if you have influenza, because some people need treatment for it. It's not harmless just to kind of spread around respiratory viruses uh, without any control. Don't believe that just because it's not COVID, you should muscle through it, because people with weak immune systems often can't. You still may get some respiratory virus in a season, um, but, you know, the, the fewer the better for, for everybody as far as, you know, keeping people at work, keeping people at school. Our Armand Rahman reporting there. A spokesperson with Public Health Madison, Dane County, says people are being hospitalized with the flu less than last season, but they can't say if that's peaked or not yet. COVID levels in wastewater could also be leveling off after spikes this past November. If Saturday night's Packers game broke your heart, you're not alone. Madison Fire responded to a call for a heart attack, but when they got there, it was a disappointed Packers fan alive and breathing. A miracle this didn't happen in more places. Take a listen. Here's what happened. The woman was texting her niece during the game, and at a tense moment near the end, you can imagine one of those were, uh, she wrote, I'm having a heart attack. The message was meant figuratively, but her niece, who lives in Missouri, took it literally, called 911. EMTs responded to the house, where they found a woman outside waiting to greet them and apologize for the misunderstanding. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's uh, it, totally understandable if that actually did happen uh, and someone did have a heart attack. I mean, there were a lot of emotions in that game. Did you have to check your pulse after that interception? Uh, I, I was proud of myself. I think... I, my expectations were tempered a bit just because sure. of how the season went. We weren't supposed sure. to be there. We're playing with house money, uh, all that. It wasn't like we were expected to win that game and then lost it right at the very end. That would have been different. So my emotions weren't riding quite that high. No heart attack in the Stanford house. No. That's good. All right, 642. Let's check in with Kelly and your first warm weather on this alert day. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, good morning. We still have some fog. It has improved just a little bit over the last half of an hour or so, but some light precipitation moving in, maybe freezing on contact. We'll see when this will change over to snow coming up in the first warm forecast. It's a robotic money expert. Clever. How do I start a savings habit? Famous cabbage. Savings habit. Shaving rabbits. Tech can make life simpler, but when it comes to savings habits, nothing's as simple as BMO. A BMO savings account helps you build the habit with a cash reward every month you save. Cash reward? Ingenious. Sardine Fest. This year's top prize goes to BMO. I'm just in it for the saving. But it's nice to be recognized. BMO. Fjords has been crafting beautifully designed functional furniture since 1941. Every aspect of Fjords furniture has been carefully engineered to create a higher level of relaxation. Visit the Century House today and view our extensive lineup. Experience the unmatched relaxation you can only achieve in Fjords furniture. Relaxation made beautiful. Visit the Century House at 3420 University Avenue in Madison or online at centuryhouseinc.com.
They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Annette Figaro is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. Try it this new year for only $14.95. Plus, get free shipping. Visit plexidermtrial.com or call the number on your screen. A logo can do more than identify your company. It can connect in meaningful ways, energize your team, and inspire your customers. We're for Imprint, and we know your logo on the right product can create moments that matter. With 30 years of experience and thousands of products to choose from, we guarantee your order will be right the first time, on time, and for a great price. Be certain that the right moments will matter. Explore thousands of promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. The Madison Camper and RV Show and Sale is back. Enjoy the great outdoors at the Alliant Energy Center Friday through Sunday, February 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. News 3 is seeking top sales talent to join our media sales team. We're not just hiring, we're building careers. Apply at channel3000.com. Unlock your earning potential and be a part of something big. Watch News 3 now at 5 with Eric, Susan, and Gary. Weeknights. Thursday at 10. Meet local moms on a mission to do something good. We both really have a heart for like helping people. I'll show you how they're using social media savvy to inform and inspire others in stressful times. Thursday at 10. We warn you first. The News 3 Now First Warn Weather Team gave you the earliest heads up when winter storms and bitter cold were on the way. First with the information you need to be prepared and stay safe. First Warn Weather. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Uh, good morning, meteorologist Kelly Slifka out on the uh, patio and getting the first sprinkles that have uh, falling now here in the uh, backyard. And uh, some of this, uh, you know, we're still sitting very close to freezing. I think the main roads will be okay. Just got to watch out for the sidewalks, anything that's elevated, your patio. Uh, that may become iced over uh, as this uh, system is moving on in. So you can see it's been increasing intensity here in southern areas of the state. Even here in Dane County now, like I mentioned here, we're in Verona here, just outside of Verona on the southwest side of Madison. See some of this uh, sprinkle activity starting to fall here uh, locally. You can see it extends uh, over just south of uh, Mount Horeb, 151 uh, through Verona. Fitchburg seeing this, Stoughton seeing this as well, over toward Lake uh, Mills. Uh, Jefferson, Fort Atkinson seeing this moving through. Visibility is actually coming up a little bit, and that's probably because the precipitation is actually taking that moisture out of the air that creates fog and putting it on the ground. But with temperatures near freezing, could see some icy spots. Your wind chill might be a little bit iced over this morning with some of the freezing fog we had overnight. I think over the next couple of hours, any of this liquid precipitation will actually change over to some snow as it starts to cool off aloft. And we could pick up one to three inches of snow later this morning into the afternoon. It should taper off after four o'clock or so. So we got this system moving through now, bringing us uh, the mix precipitation this morning, changing to snow, moving out quickly this afternoon. Quickly, we've got another one coming in from the south. It's mainly going to be warm enough. It's just going to be rain come our way tomorrow. That should move through very quickly, but we got another one coming in on Thursday. So the bottom line is going to be pretty sloppy this week and fairly active with the mixed precipitation today with rain showers expected tomorrow again on Thursday. And then finally some dry weather and milder uh, mild weather for the weekend into early next week. As far as any kind of ice, it should be pretty minor, but if you get a glaze of ice on any of those elevated surfaces, could ice up. So we'll see that this morning. Watch it in our future track this morning between 8 and 9 o'clock. All of a sudden that pink turns to blue. That means the air is turning cold enough aloft to produce snow as opposed to this uh, freezing rain that we're seeing right now. Uh, temperatures will continue to climb, but we'll, we'll still see the snow falling. Temperatures in the mid 30s today and a lot of the snow should be out of here after four o'clock moving on out as temperatures remain above freezing and it's gonna be that wet sloppy snow maybe an inch or two for most locations some isolated spots down the south maybe picking up two two and a half inches of snow 31 in Madison right now 34 in Jaysville that's the good news temperatures are climbing at or above freezing to the south. 31 in Cross Plains and also want to keep 31 in Sun Prairie just keep those headlights on. Even though it will get, uh, the sun will be up here fairly shortly and the precipitation changes over to snow. Keep those headlights on because we've had the fog. Make sure people can see you. It looks like we have more rain headed our way tomorrow again on Thursday. 
dry and mild weather for the weekend, and we could be seeing some 40s. Hopefully we get some sunshine next week. All right, we'll check back in with you soon. Kelly, thank you. We are asking for your help this morning, folks. All week long, we're throwing a community baby shower. News 3 Now is teaming up with Babies and Beyond to get the essentials that new parents need. You can drop off your donations at Babies and Beyond on the east side along Stoughton Road from 9 to 6 all week. You can also drop them off here at the station on Raymond Road. All the details are up at channel3000.com. They need diapers, baby wipes, formula, especially the bigger diapers. 649 now coming up in the morning sprint. All of the top headlines start your Tuesday. We're back right after this. Sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Indoor Water Park and Conference Center in Warrens, Wisconsin. Interested in an electric vehicle? Bergstrom has the largest selection of electric vehicles and a team you can trust. Buy with confidence and complete peace of mind from Wisconsin's number one automotive retailer. Bergstrom Automotive, driven to deliver gas, hybrid, or electric. Are record energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes? With inflation rising at record levels, and incomes not keeping pace. You might be one of tens of thousands of Wisconsin residents who are struggling to survive in the blistering heat of summer or the bitter cold of winter. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today and call 1-800-506-5596. That's 800-506-5596. Or visit www.kwwf.org. Habitat homes are not free. They're built and bought by hardworking families just like yours. Families with jobs, dreams, and a strong determination to create a better future. With stable homes, they can invest more in their health, education, community, and beyond. Choosing a treatment for your chronic migraine, 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more, can be overwhelming. So ask your doctor about Botox. Botox prevents headaches in adults with chronic migraine before they even start. It's the number one prescribed branded chronic migraine treatment. So far, more than 5 million Botox treatments have been given to over 850,000 chronic migraine patients. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away, as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. In a survey, 92% of current users said they wish they'd talked to their doctor and started Botox sooner. So ask your doctor if Botox is right for you. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Botox. Rediscover life without pain. SSM Health Orthopedics. 6.52, time for the morning sprint. Authorities in Juneau County say they have two suspects under arrest in connection with a murder near Camp Douglas. They've also identified the victims, 57-year-old Floyd Burdick, a Grand Marsh resident. His body was found Thursday morning on County Highway M at the Oak Ridge Trail parking area. That's just outside of Camp Douglas, near the town of Cutler. The case remains under investigation. Madison police arrested three kids accused of trying to break into a car. Officers were called to Tennyson Lane near Warner Park, where they found the kids. Investigators say they tried to run, but were grabbed by police before they could get away. Police officers also found what they described as a realistic fake gun nearby in the snow. The three kids were released into the custody of their parents and given referrals. The suspect police believe is responsible for the deaths of seven people in Illinois was found hundreds of miles away in Texas last night. U.S. Marshals found 23-year-old Romeo Nance near the town of Natalia. It's nearly 1,200 miles from the Illinois crime scene. 
Authorities say Nance shot himself after a confrontation with police. The U.S. Supreme Court is allowing Border Patrol to remove razor wire along portions of the southern border with Mexico. It's a 5-4 to four ruling, a big win for the Biden administration against Texas Governor Greg Abbott. The ruling applies to sections of the Rio Grande where state officials had blocked access to federal border agents. The deadliest day for Israeli soldiers in the war in Gaza. 21 were killed yesterday during fighting in the southern part of the Strip. The IDF says the group was planting explosives to try to bring down a building. That's when a rocket-propelled grenade hit a nearby tank. The building collapsed on the men. They were not able to escape. The Pentagon says the U.S. and British forces have uh, carried out a fresh round of strikes in Yemen, targeting a Houthi underground storage site as well as missile and surveillance capabilities. The eight coordinated strikes were done with support of other countries. So far, multiple rounds of strikes over the past five months have failed to stop Houthi attacks against shipping. The first votes in the country's first presidential, presidential primary are in the books this morning. People in New Hampshire heard the final speeches from the two Republican candidates last night. Then a small town of six people cast their votes right at midnight, all for Nikki Haley. The early lead likely won't hold, though. Polls have Trump ahead of Haley by double digits. President Biden will be in Wisconsin on Thursday. The campaign will stump in Superior. The White House says that Biden will be highlighting his economic agenda and rebuilding the infrastructure. Last month, the president visited the Milwaukee Black Chamber of Commerce in support of black-owned businesses. UW-Madison is facing a civil rights complaint. A conservative group is asking the Department of Education to take action against the university for its BIPOC Fellows Program. The group's founder says the program violates the 14th Amendment and the Civil Rights Act. UW's website says the mission is to bring students of underrepresented racial or ethnic groups together for empowerment. Next fall, UW Green Bay's branch campus in Marinette will end all in-person campus instruction. Online courses will continue. The campus has 99 students this year. The decision comes as 10 universities of Wisconsin schools are looking at a combined million dollar deficit by summer. Uh, five minutes away from uh, 7 o'clock as we've seen the uh, precipitation increase in the uh, southern parts of uh, Dane County, south uh, Madison. Now you can see some of this pink and blue showing up. So we've had some light rain and we've got temperatures still below freezing. I don't expect major problems, especially on the main roads, but the uh, sidewalks, any kind of ele elevated surface may get a glaze of ice on there this morning. Then this should sh quickly change over to snow probably within the hour or so. Uh, expecting one to three inches should end uh, by the later afternoon hours. We're sitting at 31, but it is about freezing down to the south, so a lot of that is actually changing over to rain down to the south. So you can quickly see between 8 and 9 o'clock, that pink shading changes to all blue, so that would indicate mainly snow after 9 o'clock, and that will continue into the afternoon before tapering off after 4 o'clock. Temperatures, though, today will be continuing to climb through the 30s. Should be climbing above freezing later this morning. And rain expected tomorrow again on Thursday. We'll keep an eye on those alert day conditions right here on News 3 Now this morning. Stay with us.